Hello, my name is Keith Simpson, and in this video, I'm going to talk to you about the Tefonia setup. This is a very brief introductory video just to explain the initial uh, leak test and compliance testing of the machine, the initial setup for ventilation, and then pushing the button to start ventilating. If you want to know more about the machine in terms of the software, the auxiliary system, its behavior, there are lots of longer and uh, more in-depth videos available on the website. But for today, we're just going to come and start with, uh, with the machine here. And I've turned the uh, push the power button, the uh, computer's come up ready, and the auxiliary system is uh, also ready. But I'm going to choose to go into the computer system by pushing the Tefonius button. While that's loading, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about the machine. So this is a, a, a piston, um, uh, so a motor-driven piston, and as such, it's a flow generator. So this machine will generate a flow uh, by the piston being forced up and down. And we're going to be volume cycling on this machine. So it's a volume cycled flow generator. And with that, we need to set a tidal volume. We're setting the inspiratory time and a respiratory rate. Um, and those are the basic settings for our machine for a, a volume cycled flow generator. So machines come on. We're just going to do the initialization. So when the machine uh, starts up, we need to zero the piston, much like you zero a set of weighing scales or whatever, just so we know the absolute position of the piston before we start. So we need to uh, disconnect the, the patient. So I'm going to take the stopper from the end of the tube, and then I'm going to press initialize. The piston will go down to the bottom. Once it's at the bottom, it'll do a zero procedure, and then we'll be ready to do our leak test. Okay, so the piston's initialized. I'm going to fit the stopper back on. And then I'm going to just push the leaking compliance button. What that's doing, now it's taking the piston up to the midpoint. It's going to pressurize the uh, cylinder at the midpoint because everything is now closed. We take the pressure up to about 20 centimeters of water pressure. At that 20 centimeters, it's going to measure the leak, and we're going to know the leak at 20 centimeters of water pressure in this system. It takes about 10, 15 seconds to do. Um, it tends to slightly over-exaggerate over the leak because the rubber diaphragms of inside just tend to expand slightly during the leak test, so over-exaggerates over, uh, the leak. But we've got a, a leak here of 240 mils, which is perfectly acceptable from what I would expect to get from a, from a system uh, with this automatic method. What it then does is takes the piston right to the top, does the same process again, but of course this time it knows the leak, so it can measure the leak and it can then also calculate the compliance of the uh, piston at the top. Having done that compliance, it then moves the piston down to the, the five meter position and repeats that. And at this position, it then again knows the leak, so it can then compensate for the leak and calculate the compliance. Then we know the compliance over the whole um, depth of the piston. Having done that, we should then get two values for our, our compliance and one for our leak. Okay, so here we are. So it's completed. Compliance at the top was 36 uh, mils per centimeter and compliance at the bottom 26 mils per centimeter. They're typical values. You'll get used to, to what your machine is, but they're normally about 35, 25. Okay, so we're going to finish that. We're going to move into the actual uh, setting up of the machine. So having done an automatic leak test, I just want to show you uh, how you can do a very quick on-the-fly leak test uh, yourself. It's very easy to do. The, the automatic leak test sets a, uh, sets a uh, system pressure 20 centimeters and measures the leak. What we're going to do, do the same thing. We're going to set a CPAP value of 20. What this does is it pressurizes the system, takes it up to 20 centimeters of pressure here on the screen. And we look at our um, piston number here, our piston volume, and it's 10.9. 2, 10.91, 10.92. So it's falling very, very slowly. And all you need to do is just to turn this uh, uh, oxygen flow meter until you hold it steady. And then when you do hold it steady, at 20 centimeters of uh, water pressure, this flow meter value will be your leak because it's perfectly compensating for the leak and the piston's not moving. So very, very simple thing to do. If you want to do a, uh, a quick leak test without going through the initialization again, we can just put that back put our um, CPAP to zero, back to zero, and we're back to where we were. Okay, so I said this is a volume cycling machine. What we're gonna do is we're gonna really only concentrate on these three green buttons here. Now for the purposes of this video, you can ignore all the monitoring, which is all monitoring up here. You can ignore these two, you can ignore these, and you can to some extent ignore these. We're just gonna concentrate on these little uh, panel of buttons, and only the green ones are the ones we're gonna change. So, 
Um, just one quick concept. There's 20 liters of, of piston volume here. If we were to put, a, say, a foal on that with a tidal volume of maybe one, two liters, that's 20 liters um, capacity, but only moving between sort of 2018, 2018. That's a lot of circuit volume uh, and will slow down changes to agent concentrations and, and response to changing the vaporizer. So much better that we would have that, say, a, a, a piston volume of five liters that went down to three and back to five. And the way you do that is you set a buffer volume. That's within the tidal volume uh, um, button, and it's just set labeled buffer. And I would set this to twice the tidal volume that you expect for your patient. So let's take a 500 kilo horse. Expected tidal volume is, say, five liters. I'm going to set my buffer to 10 liters. OK, the same uh, 500 kilo horse. For my tidal volume, I'm going to set that to five liters. And my inspiratory time for such a horse of that size, I'm going to set to two. OK, so we've got some values in blue. If the animal was breathing spontaneously, which it could at this point, these blue values would be updating the uh, actual measured values. Slightly smaller in black, we've got five liters tidal volume, a respiratory rate of five, which I'm going to change to eight, an inspiratory time of two seconds, and that defines our respiratory cycle and our delivered tidal volume. Now, the nice thing about the fact that we did the, the compliance and leak test is we know the compliance. So actually, if I'm asking for five liters of tidal volume to be delivered to the patient, you may well see when it's delivered that we actually give 5.4 or 5.5. That's because with the compliance compensation, who takes that into account, gives the extra volume to compensate for the uh, compliance of the system. And that's it. Then we're ready to go. We've set our tidal volume, we've set our respiratory rate, set our inspiratory time. That's all we need to do. And then we would just push the ventilate button. Just to mention one other thing, we saw the CPAP button in green. Above it is the MWPL. That's the maximum working pressure limit. That means that if the uh, system sees a pressure above that, it'll stop pressurizing, it'll open a release valve, and it'll start to do the um, inspiratory phase again. So that's our, that's our relief valve. OK, so I'm just about ready to push the button. I've got a uh, simulator here, and I'm just going to set uh, uh, running. Oh, sorry, a patient to simulate the, 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 the horse. Just going to push the ventilate button and we'll see how that behaves. So all being ready, I'm just going to push this button, uh, push to ventilate. It's going to deliver that five liters into the patient. We get an airway pressure of about 14 centimeters. You notice that uh, as it does it, it uh, calculates the compliance. It's actually delivered 5.3 liters, so the patient received the five. And that's it, that's all we need to do. If I deem that my 14 centimeters is a little bit low, I need a higher tidal volume, just touch the tidal volume button, increase it, let's say uh, 6.5, increase that tidal volume to 6.5. My airway pressure now gone up to 16. So I can adjust the tidal volume very easily to change that. One, uh, one or two points just to mention, of course, I'd have my uh, flow meter volume set or flow set to uh, appropriately saw four or five liters at the beginning of the surgery for my horse. And of course, we would have a vaporizer here for my agent delivery as well. But just wanted to do a very quick intro of how the machine is used, how you set it up, how you do a leak test, and how you start ventilating. And to go back to spontaneous ventilation, you merely push the standby button. Now we're back at um, spontaneous ventilation, and the patient can breathe very freely on its own. If I want to ventilate again, hit the ventilate. 